Jesus in multiple occasions called the Father. He called the Father on the cross. He called the Father while he was facing insufficiency. He called the Father to get a help so that he can feed 5,000 people. He called on the Father to intervene so he can bring his friend Lazarus from the dead. Jesus is the way we must follow. So if Jesus called on the Father, you and I, we must call the Father. But do we do it all the time? We fail sometimes to call on the Father when it's needed. You see, in the second King chapter 18, we have a story about Hezekiah, king of Judah. In his 14th year of reign, the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, invade Judah. And Hezekiah did something. Instead of calling on the father, Hezekiah tried to make a deal with the king of Assyria. He told him, I did wrong. So whatever you ask me to pay, I will pay you so that you can withdraw. Whatever you ask me to pay? Wow. You can even wait for your enemy to tell you what you need to pay, then you negotiate. But he said, whatever you ask me to pay. So the king of Assyria was so happy to give him the settlement. He was so heavy. Hezekiah did everything he could to pay that settlement. Even he went far to rob God the Almighty God to pay his enemy. But guess what? The king of Assyria and his army did not withdraw. They pursued their invasion to Jerusalem. My brother, there is no way you can make a deal with the, the enemy so that he can leave you alone. The enemy is not accepting any deal. He is up to your destruction. When King Hezekiah paid the settlement, the army continued to invade and they went even far to taunt Hezekiah and his people. Said, Oh, are you counting on the Egyptian army? Are you counting on them? Oh, if you are, just know that they will be destroyed. You cannot count on them. They even went far and proposed to Hezekiah that if you want, we can give you a 2,000 horse. If you can find a man to put on them, that means they 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 they, they, they look at looking at Hezekiah and his troop or his army like just nothing. My friend, are you messing with the enemy? Are you trying to make? A deal with the enemy so that he can leave you alone. They say the Egyptian or oh, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, is completely unreliable. 
they telling his they were telling Hezekiah that he cannot rely on the king of Egypt. My brother, my sister, what are you relying on? Who are you leaning on? From whom do you think your help will come? Who do you think will be your deliverer? Have you sinned against God? That's a good occasion. Good opportunity for the enemy. He will try to remind you that sin, that guilt, that you have a sin against God and God will not hear you anymore. God is only up to punish you. Every time you want to think about turning to God, he will, the enemy will remind you, no, remember, you have a sin against God and the weight of sin is death. You know God is mad at you, right? So God is up to punish you. The enemy know about your business. So the commander of the Assyria army know very well Hezekiah and his army. He knew that they don't have any power. So he can talk trash to them. So he went and said, perhaps you will say to me, in 2 King chapter 18, verse 22. Perhaps you will say to me, We are trusting in the law, our God. But isn't he the one who was insulted by Hezekiah? Didn't Hezekiah tear down his, his shrine and altars and make everyone in Judah and Jerusalem worship only at the altar here in Jerusalem. So it, the enemy know you very well. He knows what you have done. And he will use that against you to discourage you so that you will not have a power or desire to turn to the Father. Say, the Lord himself told us, attack this land and destroy it. The enemy is telling you that you have no mercy before God. Whatever you are going through right now is just the result of what you have done. That's why they are telling Hezekiah and his army that the Lord himself told them to attack and destroy Judah. How will Hezekiah turn to God if God is the one orchestrating their own their destruction? My friend, the enemy will tell you a lie. The enemy will try to use your guilt against you. Yes, the word of God said, all have seen and come short of the glory of the Lord. But we also know that we find a favor in Jesus. The blood that he had shed on the cross for us gave us a mercy, a forgiveness. Yet, the enemy will make you believe that once you sin, God will not show his favor toward you anymore. He will discourage you to turn to the Father and call him for his favor. My friend, will you believe in the lie of the enemy or will you call on the God anyway? Will you call on the Father anyway to see if he will show his favor to you? If I were you, I will call on the Father anyway. Because 
Take an example. Your child done, has done something wrong and you will punish them. But if they come back to you, ask for forgiveness, we accept them. How more our Father, our Creator, will not have a favor to us, will not embrace us and forgive our wrongdoing and give us a victory. God is waiting for you. No matter what you have done wrong, he's waiting for you to call. Let us follow our Savior Jesus that called the Father to intervene on his behalf. Call on God too and he will show up to help you and to deliver you, to heal you and to provide for you.